anti machinery mobilized to help people register for Padu. Employers deceiving foreign workers face blacklisting. Salam Malaysia Madani, you're watching Malaysia Tonight. I am Olivia Nicholas. The Digital Economy Centre, PEDI and Residents Representative Council, MPP teams will be mobilised to assist the community in registering and updating information in the central database hub, PADU system. Communications Minister Fami Fadil said, in addition, members of parliament could also utilise their machinery to encourage registration, thus helping to reach the target of 29 million Malaysians registered in the database before the 31st of March. Uh, sebenarnya kita ada bagi kawasan wilayah Persuan Kuala Lumpur sebagai contoh Kita ada mekanisme MPP, Majlis Perwakilan Penduduk Dan di beberapa tempat lain ada struktur yang serupa Maka saya percaya selain daripada PEDI Kita boleh kerahkan uh, jentera ini untuk membantu komuniti Saya lihat mungkin ada perlu ada sedikit uh, uh, sesi uh, pendidikan ataupun uh, uh, training ya, yang, yang boleh diberikan uh, ini tempohnya baru seminggu jadi kita lihat mungkin yang celik IT uh, dah berjaya untuk isi when asked about a political activist statement hoping that Padu would not be used as a campaign tool in the 16th general election Fami assured that the system would not be misused Earlier, Fami, who is also the Lamba Pantai MP, visited the program Jualan Termura Hitmat Dami Rakyat in the Karinchi People's Housing Program, PPR. He said the program, which offers wet and dry goods at cheaper prices, then the market can be expanded to meet demand while helping to reduce the cost of living for the people. He said the program could be held strategically at certain times, such as in the middle of the month or while waiting for payday. Sebenarnya yang kita usahakan pada hari ini adalah uh, test drive, proof of concept, yang mana saya akan sarankan uh, dan cadangkan kepada yang mahu bermak Perdana Menteri uh, bagaimana kita boleh laksana program yang sama di banyak kawasan parlimen yang lain untuk membantu terutama uh, dalam mengawal uh, kos harga barang dan uh, membantu kos sehari hidup. Ini bukan untuk bertanding dengan uh, uh, pasar raya dan sebagainya tapi dia adalah program uh, kita boleh anggap untuk membantu secara berkala. He said this program can complement the program Jualan Rama organized by the Domestic Trade and Cost of Living Ministry. In the meantime, Fami said in maximizing attendance and the community benefiting from this program, location selection is very important. Government agencies and residents in the southern region have been urged to be alert and to adhere to standard operating procedures to face the fourth wave of the northeast monsoon, which is now moving to the south. Deputy Prime Minister Datuk Sri Dr. Ahmad Zaid Hamidi said state agencies and committees need to be ready to take immediate action to deal with disasters brought about by northeast monsoon, including floods. Aluruan. Uh, gelombang uh, keempat uh, MTL musim uh, uh, timur laut ini uh, telah beralih ke selatan uh, dan uh, saya, saya harap tindakan-tindakan uh, segera mengikut SOP, SOP yang telah ditentukan uh, oleh NADMA dan juga APM dan lain-lain agensi dapat diikuti oleh semua jatuan kuasa dan juga agensi-agensi yang terlibat. The Deputy Prime Minister was met after visiting the landslide disaster site in the Orang Asli settlement of Sungai Ruil, Tanarata in Cameron Highlands. Earlier, Dato Sri Dr. Ahmad Zahid, who is also the National Disaster Management Committee Chairman, visited the Temporary Relief Centre of the Sungai Royal Orang Asli Kampung Hall, which housed 88 evacuees from 17 families affected by the incident on the 12th of October last year. 
Free media practitioners have been remanded for two days for allegedly trespassing into the official residence of Salango Mantri Basa yesterday. Shah Alam District Police Chief ACP Muhammad Iqbal Ibrahim said the investigation will be conducted under Section 447 of the Penal Code for criminal trespassing, which provides imprisonment for up to three months or with a maximum fine of 1,000 ringgit or both if found guilty. He said the police were informed about the alleged trespassing at 6.10 p.m. yesterday by a staff at the official residence. The investigation found that the three suspects entered the slang of Mantri Basa's residence in a car through the main guard house without presenting any official invitation from the state government. The suspects were arrested at 7.30 p.m. and the car was seized. According to ACP Mohammad Iqbal, the three suspects aged between 31 and 35 had no previous records. A 29-second video went viral on social media yesterday showing three individuals believed to be trespassing at the Slango Mantri Basa's official residence in Section 7, Shah Alam. In our business segment, Agro Madani sales program records over 93 million ringgit in sales. Employers who deceive foreign workers into securing non-existent jobs in Pengarang, Johor will be blacklisted and barred from conducting any business activities. This includes renewing temporary employment visit passes for the current workers at the Immigration Department. Home Minister Dato Sri Saifuddin Nasution Ismail and Human Resources Minister Stephen Sim Chi Kyung in a joint statement said the employers involved would also be blacklisted from applying for new foreign worker employment under Section 60K of the Employment Act 1955. The remaining quota for hiring foreign workers and conditional approval letters issued to these employers for levy payments will also be cancelled. Both ministers said action would be taken based on the Immigration Act 1959-1963, the Anti-Trafficking in Persons and Anti-Smuggling of Migrants Act 2007, the Employment Act 1955, as well as the Minimum Standards of Housing, Accommodation and Amenities for Employees Act 1990. In addition, inspections and audits will be conducted on any employer who has brought in workers to the Foreign Workers Employment Flexibility Plan. The ministers also announced that a special meeting will be held on the 16th of January to discuss, among others, steps to improve the governance of foreign workers' employment in the country. My EG Services Burhad My EG announced that the online renewal of work passes or the WAS Paslawatan Kurja Sementara PLKS for foreign workers will resume on the 15th of January this year. My EG said the resumption comes following the completion of a system enhancement carried out as part of the requirements for the extension of the service granted earlier by the Ministry of Home Affairs. In a statement to Brusa Malaysia, my EG said the board is of the view that the resumption of service is in the best interest of the company and it is expected to contribute positively to the earnings and net assets per share of the company from the financial year ending 31st of December 2024 onwards. On the 16th of October last year, my EG received a letter of acceptance from the ministry to extend the service for two years. With the resumption, users can visit my EG's website as shown on the screen starting 15th of January to apply for the renewal of the PLKS for domestic maids and foreign workers and enjoy the convenience of having the relevant documents delivered to their premises. The Agro Madani sale has recorded sales amounting to 93.7 million ringgit last year and involved the participation of 74,800 entrepreneurs. Deputy Agriculture and Food Security Minister Dato Arthur Joseph Kurup said the program was held at 5,608 locations and attracted 2.9 million visitors. Dan kesemua ini merupakan pen jimatan kepada pengguna lebih daripada 27 
juta ringgit dan kita telah membantu hampir 12 juta isi rumah di seluruh negara. Jadi memandangkan uh, bahawa pada tahun lalu uh, uh, sambutan dia sangat baik dan juga sangat menggalakkan, sangat membantu kepada rakyat. Pada tahun ini kita akan buat lagi 5,000 sesi jualan. Dato Arta was met after the opening of the Agro Madani mega sales in Kuala Lumpur. At the event, a signing ceremony for the exchange of notes on skills training in agriculture was held between the Farmers' Organization Authority, FOA, and the Prisons Department. Through the collaboration, the FOA will provide allocation for the training of prison inmates in agriculture. Private housing developers planning on developing large-scale projects in Sarawak are no longer required to build affordable homes starting from the first quarter of the year this year. Instead, developers involved in projects that span 10 acres or more are required to make compensation in lieu through a housing trust fund which will be used by the state government for the development of the affordable homes on the specific project sites. Previously, state laws require the private sector to allocate 30% of housing schemes or mixed development projects to construct affordable homes when the developed land areas of 10 acres or more. Yes, sebab itu, uh, saya uh, telah uh, meminda dasar ini dan sekarang apa yang perlu ialah the quantum of payment to be paid by the developer to this central uh, Trust fund, trust fund yang akan kita gunakan untuk membangun rumah mampu milik dan sudah itu kerjaan juga membangunkan rumah mampu milik. He said the quantum of payment will depend on the location and market value of land for the housing projects. The Premier said the decision to take control of affordable housing construction was made as some property developers were not serious in developing such projects. By empowering the state government to oversee the construction of low-cost homes, he hopes to prevent issues of delay in projects. The Premier was met after visiting the Sungai Badawan housing project site today. The rubber market is likely to trade range bound next week with an upward bias on the expectation of lower production of the commodity. According to Dennis Lowe, the press president of the Malaysian Rubber Glove Manufacturers Association, continuous rain in rubber producing regions is affecting rubber production activities. Lowe said the adverse weather condition may increase the incidence of some diseases, especially leaf diseases, which are caused by fungi that are very common in humid and wet conditions and further hamper the productivity of rubber trees. Hence, this extended monsoon will lead to tapping delays and lower rubber production while having to be vigilant on fungi attack. Lowe said the global economic outlook is uncertain as economies try to grapple with expensive shipping rates and the strong US dollar. For the week just ended, the local rubber market was traded mixed as it was influenced by regional rubber future markets, crude oil prices and the ringgit's performance against the US dollar. AirlineRatings.com has named Air Asia Group, including medium haul affiliates Air Asia X and Thai Air Asia X, as one of the safest low cost carriers in the world for 2024. In a statement today, Air Asia Aviation Group Chief Executive Officer Bo Lingam said safety has always been their number one priority, affecting every airline brand and reputation. He said the carrier will continue to invest heavily in safety management systems, including ongoing certification via regular international operational safety audits by the International Air Transport Association across the group. The world's only airline safety and product rating agency on Wednesday announced its top 20 safest low-cost airlines for 2024 among the 385 airlines it monitors. The criteria used to decide the top 20 include incident records, fleet age results, of audits conducted by the governing body of aviation, the International Civil Aviation Organization, as well as European Union band lists. AirlineRatings.com editor-in-chief Geoffrey Thomas said the group has continued to pass all major safety audits and its dedication and focus to safety should be commended. 
Asia outpaced other continents in Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index PMI performance in 2023, reaching parity with the previous year and displaying stronger growth resilience than other continents. The manufacturing industries in Asia outperformed their peers in Europe, America and Africa, which were limping ahead with sluggish pace in operation. Statistics published by China Federation of Logistics and Purchasing indicated that the average manufacturing PMI in Asia last year stood at 50.7%, displaying stronger resilience compared to other regions. Europe has seen manufacturing's PMIs remain below the 50% threshold that separates contraction from expansion for record 17 months running. Data showed the Eurozone's 2023 average manufacturing PMI came to 46.3 percent, down 5.6 percentage points from 2022. The Americans have endured 14 successive months of manufacturing PMIs below 50 percent. The 2023 average was only 47.5 percent, 5.6 percentage points lower than the previous year. In Africa, manufacturing PMI for the full year 2023 shrank to 48.8%, declining 1.9 percentage points from the previous year in light of generally weaker global recovery dynamics. The world's major analytic agencies painted rosier prospect for economic growth in Asia in comparison with other continents, and Asia is making growing contribution to global economic growth. Thailand's 2024 budget aimed at stimulating economic growth went through its first parliament hurdle after a three-month delay due to the political gridlock. The budget was passed in a vote late Friday with 311 lawmakers supporting it, while 177 opposed and four abstained from voting of the three days of heated debate. Prime Minister Shweta Tavisin presented the budget on Wednesday and called for 3.48 trillion baht or $101 billion was spending with a deficit of $19.9 billion, an increase from the $17.1 billion previously approved by the prior government. Thailand's economy is projected to grow 2.7 to 3.7% this year. This year's budget was delayed due to prolonged political gridlock following the general election in May last year. A new government was formed in August and the budget is expected to take effect in May. Meanwhile, Shreta Tavisin thanked all members of parliament for the support of the budget and pledged to manage the allocation with utmost prudence and effectiveness. He said the budget focuses on making people's lives better through comprehensive economic, social and political policies in the short and long term. U.S. employers hired more workers more than expected in December while raising wages at a solid clip, casting some doubt on financial market expectations that the Federal Reserve would start cutting interest rates in March. There were, however, some cracks in the closely watched employment report from the Labor Department yesterday. The economy added 71,000 fewer jobs in October and November than previously reported. While the unemployment rate held at 30.7% last month, that was because 676,000 people left the labor force, almost erasing all the gains in participation since February. Household employment fell sharply and the work week was an on average slightly shorter than in November. Nonetheless, the report indicated that the economy avoided a recession last year and would likely continue to grow through 2024 as labor market resilience supports consumer spending. The economy added 2.7 million jobs last year, a sharp step down from the 4.8 million positions created in 2022. That reflected cooling demand in the economy following 525 basis points worth of rate hikes from the UK central bank since March 2022. Roughly 100,000 jobs per month are needed to keep up with the growth in the working age population. Tesla is recalling more than 1.6 million electric vehicles in China, marking another blow for the U.S. firm days after its surpass in EV sales by China's BYD. The recall was sparked by the discovery of problems with assisted driving functions and door locking systems. 
The recall will be conducted through remote over-the-air updates to the car's software. About 1.6 million imported Model S, Model X and Model 3 and domestic Model 3 and Model Y electric vehicles with production dates between 26th of August 2014 and 20th of December 2023 will be recalled. The recall will also include 7,538 imported Tesla models made between 26th of October 2022 and 16th of November 2023, which were found to have a problem with the door unlock logic controls. In 2022, the firm recalled nearly 128,000 cars in China due to a rear motor inverter defect. And last month, Tesla initiated a recall of over 2 million vehicles in the United States and Canada due to risks associated with the autopilot software. China is a vital component in Tesla's global layout, both as a large consumer market and the host of a major manufacturing plant in Shanghai. Mask is diverting all container vessels from Red Sea routes around Africa's Cape of Good Hope for the foreseeable future, warning customers to prepare for significant disruption. Shippers across the world are switching away from the Red Sea after Iranian back Houthi group in Yemen stepped up attacks on vessel in the Gulf region. The trip around Africa can add about 10 days to journey times and requires more fuel and crew time jacking up shipping costs. Denmark's Amaz had said earlier this week it would pause all vessels bound for the Red Sea following an attack on one of its ships by Houthi groups and has since begun redirecting ships around Africa. It said the situation is constantly evolving and remains highly volatile and all available intelligence at hand confirms that the security risk continues to be at a significantly elevated level. As a result, the company which controls about one-sixth of global container trade will divert all mass vessels around the Cape of Good Hope for the foreseeable future. The news will deepen concerns about a prolonged disruption to the delivery and supplies of goods from clothing to cars even after the United States on 19th of December launched a multinational operation to try to safeguard commerce in the Red Sea. In our foreign segment, Alaska Airlines grounds planes after window blows out. Alaska Airlines grounded its Boeing 737 MAX 9 planes after a flight with 177 people on board made an emergency landing in the U.S. state of Oregon, with passengers reporting a plane window panel blew out after takeoff. Alaska Airlines said following the event on flight 1282, the company has decided to take the precautionary step of temporarily grounding its fleet of 65 Boeing 737-9 aircraft. Each aircraft will be returned to service only after completion of full maintenance and safety inspections. The Boeing 737 MAX 9 plane took off at 5.07 p.m. local time heading to Ontario, California before returning to the Portland airport around 20 minutes later. Images posted on social media show the window panel of a plane blown out with emergency oxygen masks hanging from the ceiling. The National Transportation Safety Board, the Federal Aviation Administration and Alaska Airlines each said they were investigating the incident. Rescuers and residents sifted through rubble as focus turned to recovering bodies and cleaning up rather than finding survivors. Five days after a huge earthquake struck central Japan, killing at least 126 people. The death toll from the New Year's Day 7.5 magnitude quake in the Ishikawa region of Japan's main Honshu Island was certain to rise with 210 people still uncounted for. The work of thousands of rescue workers has been hampered by bad weather and road torn apart by gapping cracks and blocked by an estimated 1,000 landslides. 
Houses containing any fatalities that are discovered are being marked and left alone until a coroner can come with relatives to identify the body. In an emergency response meeting, Prime Minister Fumio Kishida told ministers to swiftly repair roads to help hundreds of people in cut-off areas. Around 23,800 households were without electricity in Ishikawa region and more than 66,400 without running water. Sports top seed Garth cruises into Auckland final. Top seed Coco Gauff will continue her defense of the Auckland Open title in Sunday's final after the U.S. Open champion brushed aside fellow American Emma Navarro 6-3-6-1 in the Australian Open warm-up event. The world number three made light work of Navarro in progressing to the decider where she will meet Elena Svitolina after the Ukrainian rally to beat China Wang Ziyu 2-6-6-4-6-3 in the second semi-final. Goff made a commanding start and held a 4-2 lead in the opening set when rain, which has fallen regularly throughout the tournament, brief stoply play. The 19-year-old American continued her strong showing, extending her lead upon the player's return to the court and eventually winning the first set with few concerns. Goff then tightened her grip when she broke her compatriots' serve in the opening game of the second set and consolidated that lead further after Navarro missed hit in the fifth game that gave her an unassailable lead. Some news on local sports. Academy Badminton Malaysia ABM coaching director Rexy Mainaki hopes the national shuttlers can't end the country's six-year title drought in the Malaysia Open that will be held at the Aksatara Arena in Kuala Lumpur from the 9th to the 14th of January. Rexy called on the national shuttlers not to miss out on the chance to win the World Tour Super 1000 title, which Malaysia last won in 2018 through Datho Lee Chong Wei. Siapapun ya, pasti kita kalau sebab, bukan hanya saya juga, siapapun yang di sini player ataupun punya punya ekspektasi, kan kita bisa as a host kita bisa champion ya. ya. Kita akan berusaha itu, 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 itu apa? Uh, title ya tapi kita juga harus realistik sekarang kompetitornya sekarang kita bisa cakap sekarang siapapun kan tidak tidak stable ya siapapun yang champion bisa next ini champion ya kita mengharapkan uh, terpulang lagi kepada uh, persiapan Siyong ya persiapan ya bukan Siyong bukan siapapun di sinilah ada Aeron Ayi Pelitina ya Tangje dengan ini dengan experience yang mereka sudah go through di last year ini, saya harapkan mereka bisa di sini as a host punya motivasi lebih. ya. Dan kalau bertanya bahwa saya ingin title, of course. National badminton legend Datho Lee Chong Wei has won the Malaysia Open 12 times from 2004 to 2006, 2008 to 2014 as well as in 2016 and 2018. That concludes this evening's Malaysia Tonight. In our top story, Paddy and MP Missionary mobilized to help people register for Padu. Do tune in to World Today coming up tomorrow at 12.30 p.m. on TV2. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. I am Olivia Nicholas. Thanks for watching.